Hey guys, so we're uh, we're collecting the parts for our teapot um, body, um, and uh, so we're get, we're working on getting the the spout and the handle collected. What we've collected so far is um, the two body parts and the foot and the rim, and then we're getting our or we already have our spout and our handle. So one of the things that we can kind of do in between some of these things, depending on time management and all that stuff, is starting to do a little bit of the assembly work. Um, and the first thing that we're going to need to do when this bowl becomes leather hard is smooth the outside. Um, we put this, we smooth the inside um, by scraping all those parts that we pressed in there together and then smoothing it so it was all compressed. Um, and now we need to do that to the outside because we didn't score any of that stuff. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape this down um, to blend everything together. All right, so I, I've got this on my banding wheel here, which just makes everything way easier. Um, and you can see I've got some some joints and some crack issues. Um, they're not super bad. Um, if I have some of these holes, these pits that are very deep, I might put a little drip of water in there and, and smash some soft clay in there first um, to just do a little bit of patchwork. But these aren't too bad. So I'm going to go around. That's There's a pit right here, if you can see. And I'm going to scrape this and watch those disappear. There's another pit right here. But I'm kind of scraping the area. I'm, I'm smearing all this stuff together. I'm taking it all down a little bit. I'm, I'm thinning this out in the course of all this. So it is, you know, I'm scraping some off of here. Um, so it is getting a little bit thinner still. Um, but mostly I'm blending all those parts together so they don't come undone on me. Uh, one of the things you might see if you don't do this well is um, in the firing, especially sometimes even just in the drying, um, but in the firing, you might see some of these cracks open up. Um, so it is pretty important to do this unless you like having cracks all over your pot. Um, now I'm going around and I'm going to start smoothing this out. So I'm using the smooth side of this and I have a little bend in there so it's it's cupping around the side of this sometimes it'll come up this way um, but mostly this way when you're smoothing it's important to clean this blade off um, I've said this a million times but this thing acts as a knife and it it cuts all this debris off so every time I do that I've got debris on here if I don't clean that off it just starts redepositing so I just kind of get into that that rhythm of cleaning this off. Swipe, wipe, swipe, wipe. Just kind of getting that real clean. Um, I don't super care about this, the bottom right now. And we'll come back to that when we assemble these the, the two body parts. So I'm gonna do this on both my bowls um, and then we'll get the, um, the foot on there. I've smoothed out both of my bowls and now I'm starting to, uh, I'm going to put my, the foot on here. So when, uh, when we start th thinking about putting the foot on here, we want to think about <clears throat> what that's going to look like and the, and, and how we might put that together. Um, one good way to think about this, a, a good, solid, simple way to think about this is the rule of thirds. It's a really great, um, way to think about things in art and design super simple breakdown of things um, that makes things feel right that makes things feel um, balanced and proportional um, and uh, and and it's just a, a, a simple thought process so the rule of thirds is simply that is just breaking things down into three parts into thirds so with this with putting the foot on here Breaking this down into thirds, um, in my opinion, will help the balance of this feel right. As in, if it's too wide, if your foot on the arc of this, the dome of this is too wide, it might feel um, heavy and clunky and you might not really take advantage of the form or the shape that's here. If it's too narrow, 
Um, if you have a really small foot on here, it might not feel balanced and it might feel, and it might even function more than that um, poorly or incorrectly. It might be unbalanced literally and visually. It might fall over or whatever. So something like in the realm of a third of this, breaking this down into three parts. So from the edge of the rim to the middle, to the edge of the outer rim, breaking that into thirds, in my opinion, will give this um, visual stability and balance and it will feel nice and it will also functionally um, do that. So um, I'm gonna put this on my banding wheel. I smoothed it out. Uh, I might make a line where I think that third is. So kind of just roughly measuring that. That's a little bit bigger but I'm gonna score inside there. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing like the, the, the curve come around here a little bit. I'm seeing the form of that. And that's the outside edge of where this foot is gonna go. Okay, so I scored that up. Um, and now I have my foot here. So this is the strap. I roll the slab of clay. I cut straps out, just like we did on our last project, the mug. Um, and I let that set up. This is still a little bit soft right now, but I'm gonna cut through both of these and take out those chunks and see what this looks like. It's a little bit smaller than what I did, but that's that's fine actually. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start assembling this. I'm, I scored that. I don't have to trim this down. If it was too too big, especially, I would just cut out a chunk before I did this, but I'm gonna score this, both of those edges, put a little water in there, and then work that together. And then I'll call this my bottom here. So I'm gonna score around here really well. some water up on there just kind of I'm not rubbing it in I'm just dripping it in sometimes I'll use a paintbrush and now I can take this foot and really carefully press this down on here I'm just going around and making sure that it's adhered really well again this is really ta um, tall um, which is how we want it for now so I just want to make sure that I'm getting this on well. Okay, so that seems pretty good. We got a couple cracks. Remember for cracks, we don't want to smooth over the surface. Again, for cracks, if you get little cracks in there, we want to stab into it with your knife. I like to use my knife um because we want to get into that so it's like i'm scoring the edges of that i'll put a little drip of water in there and then i'll roll the tiniest tiniest micro coil this is too much clay right here i'm gonna rip that in half super small coil to just jam sometimes i'll even squeeze it flat a little bit so i can i can put that inside there i can insert it into that crack because again for cracks we want to fill those we don't want to smear over the surface. You can't do that because the crack is still under there. We gotta, we gotta treat the crack. Okay. All right. So I got that in there. Um, and go around, kind of smooth things a little bit. But one of the one of the main things that I want to do here is trim this down. Um, I want to get this nice and level now. So. <clears throat> Using the banding wheel, again, getting this centered. The banding wheel has these rings on it, which helps me um, center a thing. So if I just put this on here and get it spinning, you can see it's going crazy. But if I use the rings on here, I can see how close the edge of my, my bowl is to the edge of the banding wheel. And I've got a lot of space over here, right? So if I use those rings and eyeball it just to make sure that those look good, looks evenly spaced all the way around. Now it spins a lot more stably. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better. 
So with this, when we get that centered, I've got this attached. Now I can figure out how tall I want this. So with a knife or a needle tool, um, I can come in and draw my lines. Maybe I do want a tall foot, so I'm just gonna cut it down a little bit. Um, I don't, I want it, I'm gonna cut this in half. So let's go there. I just wanna draw a line. It is super hard to cut an evenly leveled spaced line. You know, a lot of people go up and down as they get around and the line doesn't connect from the start to the end. So drawing the line, in my opinion, is critical. Now I have a line that I can follow. So I can go around this and cut it and it's super easy. Um, <clears throat> so now I've got this foot generally assembled. I can use things like a wooden rib. If I want this to be rounded and have a soft connection, I can use a wooden rib to get in there and kind of smooth that out. Um, I can use the hard edge of it if I want to have a sharp point on there, like a little break between the parts. Um, sometimes that can be nice. Um, so we want to just kind of make sure that we're smoothing this and getting this really good and clean, both the inside and the outside. Um, the last thing that I might do is come in with a sponge and just kind of soften all this. I could round it if I want, like we did. We spoke when we made our mugs about rounding the lip, the rim of the mug. So if I want this round, I could do that. This is the foot of a thing, so it's a little bit different. This is what your teapot is gonna sit on. So maybe you don't want it rounded. That's totally your preference. So just kind of cleaning it up, using the spinning motion of the banding wheel and a little water just to dampen the surface, just to kind of help hydrate it and clean it up. So we can do this to both halves, but knowing one is gonna be the foot and one is going to be the um, rim of this. Okay, so I'm gonna put the other, the other half on. Okay guys, so I'm gonna um, put these two halves together. I've got one more piece to collect that I'm missing, which is my handle. So that should be the first thing that I do here. Again, with any project, we wanna collect all our parts first. Uh, but sometimes there's reasons, you know, the flow of the classroom and whatever. Um, you might have to jump in between things. But I really want to get that handle made. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that um, as soon as possible. But I'm going to show you guys how to connect these two halves right now. So I got the foot and the rim on both of these now. Um, I can't connect these until at least one half is pretty stiff. Um, so this one seems like the stiffer one and it looks fine for my foot. Um, so this one's going to be the rim of this. This is gonna be the top, this is gonna be where the lid sits. Okay, so before we connect these, the last thing that we wanna do is we wanna cut that opening. Oh, um, again, I'm using this, the, the softer one here. This, this one's a little bit firmer and can bear the weight when I put these two together. But before I do that, the last thing I wanna do is I wanna open this up. So we want this to, um, so we want this to be a flush cut inside here. So I'm gonna start by just cutting this. I'm not gonna just go for it. I'm gonna just open this up a little bit. By opening it up, it takes the pressure off the blade. So I'm just gonna kind of get a little cut. Now, as I cut this, the, the clay can move inside it because there's space. So I'm just kind of cutting that open. But we're doing a, we're gonna build a flange lid. So for this, we just need a flush cut. So what I want is the knife to go straight up and down and I'm sliding over to the edge. I'm sliding over to the edge and my blade is going right against the rim, this coil that I put on here. So this is a flush cut. Drop that down in there. Just gonna go back and um, do kind of a, a clean up cut. Just if there's any bits that are uneven or missed, 
I'll just cut a little bit more out just to make sure that that looks real clean. Oops, get out of there. Okay, so now we have the opening cut to this thing. And so now I can, now I can um, put these two halves together. So again, I'm using, I, I made my decision on which one to use as the lid in a couple ways, um, but primarily I chose that to be um, the bottom. I chose this one, this one to be the bottom because um, that one was too soft over there. I've got just a little divot. So I'm just going to pass out. Sometimes we choose the which half is the is going to be the top um, based on the thickness of of these. Like maybe one of the bottoms you know is a little bit too thin, um, so you have that one kind of earmarked to be the the um, the bottom or the top because you know you want to cut that out. So I forgot I had a little had a little finger dent in there that I did. So I just patched it out. Okay, so anyways, this one is, is more stiff. I can stand it on, on here and get that, and it, it can bear the weight of both of these coming together. So I'm gonna go around here and score this up really good. Okay, I'm scoring this. I'm gonna dip this in water to hydrate that. And then I'm going to score this one as well. So I'm scoring this. That one's dipped in water. I might as well dip this one too. What the heck? And then I'm going to put these two together. When I do this, I don't want to give this like direct pressure down. Because um, I don't want to like smash this up. So I kind of cut both of them a little bit. I mean, I do push down on it a little bit. But we don't want to flatten that thing. Okay, so I'm go I'm getting in here. I'm kind of mashing these two things together, making sure that they really bite onto each other. And like I said, this this is why I didn't super care when I was smoothing the outside. I didn't really care about getting so close to the rim because I knew we were going to come back and scrape that down pretty good at this point. So <clears throat> I got it connected pretty good. The last thing we're going to do to this is scrape this off. So what I, I'm going to scrape this until this looks level. When I'm scraping this, I'm looking at the profile of this pot. I'm looking at this profile right here. I can still see there's a little bump out. There's a huge lip around this. I want to shave that down until it's gone. So I'm using this rib here and the teeth of this scrape that until it's gone and that's looking better right there okay so I'm gonna go around the whole pot and make this lip disappear so that I get a nice flush round bulbous body Okay, and there we go, guys. <clears throat> We're on our way to making a, um, our, we've got our teapot body form and we've got, we're on our way to getting the whole thing assembled. The next thing we need to do is get the spout on and then the handle. Um, but getting the body, getting the whole thing really assembled to this point um, is, is, is a must before we do that, obviously. But um, there's the kind of steps and progression of, of uh, assembling the foot and the rim and getting that body together.